First thing I'm gonna realize is I don't understand any of the signs uh, that are on the road. I think that's gonna be the one thing, but uh, yeah, I don't know what to expect and then just try to take it all in when we're there. Thank you. Thank you. Is it Tuck? I'm probably just gonna be following the Swedes around and, and, and kind of just having them show me the ropes. I'm just excited to see what, you know, a foreign city looks like, a European city, and I've heard lots of great things about Stockholm. <laughs> Okay. I mean, it's just a fun opportunity, um, great experience to be able to go and, and play in your home country in front of your uh, friends and family. So it's uh, just a lot of uh, excitement. Hey. Hey. <laughs> just see my family coming down for for the weekend and, and in the middle of the season is, is usually very rare. So it's a lot to l look forward for. You know, you take everything in. You know, you have all your family, friends that uh, usually don't come over here and, and watch you. Good evening, hockey fans, and welcome to Avicii Arena in Stockholm, featuring the Minnesota Wild. You know, it's a, it's a big deal for our European players, too, so I know they're excited, and, and we want them to, you know, show interest in their cities, their, their countries, and, and uh, get to know them a little more. The different culture, from food to how, how we um, live overseas and, and all that kind of thing. It's just going to be, be fun to, to show all this where, where we come from. Welcome to Sweden. Brings back some, some memories from when, when I played in, in Sweden. Hovet Arena is, is the main home for Djurgården and IAK that right now are in the in the second league in, in Sweden. Oh, I played there when I was Younger had some uh, playoffs game there. Um, that's a pretty cool experience. You see uh, the Swedish media and uh, you see uh, people there that you've seen before. So that was just a pretty cool experience for sure. But it's exciting. It's exciting to see, and it's exciting that we have four players that are from here and they're, they get to come home during the season to see their family and play in front of their peeps. I think it was 300 people, right? Came from Minnesota, so that was uh, pretty cool that they flew all the way and watched those. So it was, it was fun. Yeah, so half the group arrived in Finland about four days prior, and then they actually took a ferry boat overnight from Helsinki and arrived with us uh, on Wednesday. So they were doing a, a few activities while the rest of the group was flying in, and then everybody met up on Wednesday in Stockholm, and it was a big day with a lot of uh, wild-focused events. Thank you for coming. This just speaks volumes about our fans and what hockey means to the state of Minnesota. We so appreciate that very much. Uh, we're gonna have we're gonna have fun here, and we're gonna get our business done. So thank you. We'll see you as the week goes out. This is gonna be a fun trip. Thanks. Well, just as Minnesotans, hockey is kind of just ingrained in us. So anytime we get a chance to go visit new places and watch hockey, I mean, how do you get any better? Uh, it's no surprise to us. Obviously, we know this fan base is, is incredibly loyal, but uh, special commitment, special, you know, for, for those folks to set aside the time and, and commit to being out there. So no surprise, but yeah, quite a loyal fan base. And these guys are just so great. They're truly great guys outside of this. And I think that's what, I mean, hockey, obviously, just the game itself, it's just an amazing sport. But then knowing that the guys are just such good guys out on the outside, it, it helps. It makes you want to root for them even more.
はいはい。We're at the outside of the Avicii Arena. Before that, it was called the Globe, but the,、uh, now it's in memory of、uh, Avicii. They renamed it to Avicii Arena. The sky view, right? It's like a Gondolo. The globe looks like a very big golf ball. You can pretty much say. So you go up there and and you get the view of all of Stockholm from down city to to far out. I'm、uh, Matt Cubetta. I work for NHL.com International. We have eight different foreign language sites: Finnish, Swedish, German. Czech, Slovak, Spanish, French, and a Russian website, which is not active right now. The better here, the better one. That at ease and a minder, so it'll be a little bit different. Our goal was to create a unique experience with the two players, and, and and then we had our Swedish writer, Yanni Benson, talk to him about on the ice type questions, off the ice fun questions. The players were great about it and, and gave us some good content. Hey, Eric, I got a question for you. When I was playing in Sweden and you were a little kid, what did you always have in your hands when you came into the locker room after games? Oh, those. As a kid,、uh, I liked have, having candy, or I still do. I still have a sweet tooth. So, yeah, my dad、uh, used to coach、uh, the team he played for. So,、uh, after wins, he, he usually brought me into the locker room, and I was watching the games with with candies.、So、I brought some some down. It was probably、uh, how he how he remembers it. So our our model is a bit different than what you see in North America, where we don't focus as much on the gameplay because of the time difference. They don't they don't see as many games, so it's more about giving them unique experiences in terms of content. It was it was unfortunately a little tough weather out there today, but seeing Stockholm and 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 being up of this arena was the first time for for us, so it, it was awesome. Can I use this on you? Perfect. Thank you so much. Hi, Mr. Polinio. How you doing? I'm doing fine.、There、Thank you, you so much. You're welcome. You're from Finland. I see you. Thank you very much. How are you? Thanks. Tell me about all the times you've been to Europe before. I've never been to Europe before. <laughs> never been. It's awesome to be here and see the kind of the, the Swedish players embrace it and, and and want us to embrace their culture and how proud they are of where they come from, their country. So. It's once in a lifetime chance to, to do this stuff, and、uh, you know we're grateful to be a part of it. We got to fuel up here in the morning.、Uh, we got to go to Espresso House. We saw this on the way in, so we'll go get a coffee, a pastry, and then、uh, I was told to go to、uh, one of these Viking museums and, and go check out、uh, some of the Viking culture here in、uh, Sweden. So that's what we're going to check out today. Can I do a cafe latte? Yes. Do you want it extra strong? Yes, please. Yes. She knows that I need it extra strong, and I'll do the、uh, cannibal.、Yes. Cannibal, yes. Is that pretty good? Cannibal. It's, it's、uh, classic for Swedish. Oh, perfect. Let's do it. Thank you. Thank you. Is it tuck, tuck? Tuck some again. Tuck some again. Thank you. It's、uh, very good. Swedish pastries are good. Pastries just in general. We're here at the Vasa Museum. Finally made it, and、uh, we're gonna go in and、uh, check、uh, check it out and、uh, see the ship. Oh, good morning. Nice good to、hands. meet you. How are you, Peter? I'm fine. Yeah, What、nice. a pleasure. Yeah, thanks. Have you. thanks for having us here. It's、yeah. awesome. So, Want to see the ship? Yeah. Let's go, let's go <laughs> in. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh my gosh. But very fortunate for us to have this in the museum here today. <laughs> this is unreal. This just doesn't, doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it's the, it's, it's the Vasa. It was a, a warship that was commissioned by the king at those days, Gustavus Adolphus. And he aimed for the most heavily armed warship in the Baltic in 1628. But it was a, a failure. When the ship heeled over a bit to the side, water started to gush in and then adding weight on the wrong side of the ship. So it started to lean even more. And then after, after a while it sank. But in 1957, we located the ship and then managed to actually to salvage it. It's one moment frozen in time from 1628. It doesn't only tell us about the Navy, it also tells us a lot about people who lived there because we actually have found skeletons of some of the sailors and we have done DNA studies on them. So we can actually learn quite a lot from they, they living in Stockholm 1628. So you see the Swedish coat of arms up there with the two lions. So the overall idea is actually to uh, show how glorious the, the Swedish king is at this time. They would directly have seen that this is a young boy because he lacks something that any man of importance in 1628 should have. And I'm afraid yours wouldn't do because it's a very strong beard yeah. and a very <laughs> big mustache. Okay. I think you would be a little bit girlish okay. in, 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 in the 17th century version. I wasn't made, I wasn't yeah. made for that so, era. No. You know, just hearing the stories from Peter and what that time, what was going on, and what war was like, is it's pretty, pretty crazy from from what it is what you hear about nowadays. So, it's wild, and then just to see the size of this thing, I don't know, to see this approaching you in battle would be pretty intimidating. So, it's it's obviously a, a kind of a treasure for for Sweden. very nice for your soul to just be be back home and where you're from and uh, just just happy overall I'm just, I, don't, I don't think I've had a smile on my face this big for so long yeah so we just played the the wolves I think it was uh, Saturday last week and uh, had a great game had a win and got called into the coach's office uh, where they basically just told me I'm, I'm going to Sweden with with Minnesota his hometown isn't far away from Stockholm. I think it's probably an hour commute or something. And I, I know how tough it is coming over here and, and not seeing your parents all the time and, and coming back to Sweden, seeing them in the in the middle of the season. Having him with the team, showing him a different road trip, it's it was great to to have him with us. It's always awesome to be around in the, the NHL club and you get treated very, very well, and hopefully one day I'll, I'll do this full time. That's, that's my goal, and I want to be up here sooner than later. But you'll also have to have uh, patience in it. Okay, for the weekend, Philip, you're playing tomorrow, and we haven't decided for Sunday. We'll see how things go, and depending on uh, how the game goes, a lot of shots and a lot of shots, we'll decide after the game what we're doing on Sunday. Okay? Good. Let's have a good practice. Let's get ready. Our energy should be high. We haven't practiced in two days. But let's be in detail too. Okay? Yep. Let's go. Let's work out so. This is going to be so easy for you guys to edit. You, take, you cut out the first 20 minutes. I'm just standing there alone. It's it's it doesn't feel like I have anyone to talk to there out there in practice. It, the first 20 minutes is always just shots, 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 and and you just have to catch your breath and, and try and stay fresh. Oh, oh. too many moves. So we do them. You should be being fit there. That's why in the mist hard. Yeah. So during power play, PK, or or if there's in zone drills, you usually have one or two defensemen right in front of you or, or a forward there so that you can chit chat a little bit with. Got some extra ice here in the corners. Huh? Extra ice in the corners. I even had a beachy? Huh? There's a beachy no, hybrid? No, no, no. 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 So small. 
Yeah, so so the ice surface in in Europe and and Sweden have the the bigger ice, so its length is the same as a North American ice, but the width is is so much wider. I love five hole. I love five hole. It feels like if the puck is in the corner, you can you can almost stand on your straight legs and, and not care about the puck. I can just imagine for the players uh, how much more skating and, and much room there is. Just how excited are you to start tomorrow playing in Sweden in front of family and friends and everybody else? Yeah, no, it, it's what you dreamt of growing up. You always wanted to play in the NHL and then do it here in, in Sweden in front of all my family and, and grandparents that maybe don't have the possibility to fly over to, to North America. It, it's going to be awesome. Welcome to Stockholm, Sweden, here at Avicii Arena. And TR, the team has been in Sweden for a couple of nights now, getting used to the culture, this great city. And this morning, the Minnesota Wild take on the Ottawa Center. Third blast there, you guys notice that that's shorter. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of kick on it, so just heads up on that one. Uh, but what is lively is their board, so defensively awareness and offensively. We can jump on loose pucks and go. The other thing, uh, with the benches are long, so just make sure on changes we got our guy dialed in there because they're definitely watching that. Yeah. Hey. 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 Well, let's see what we got. Bolts! Hey! Jojo! Hey! Me! Hey! Rose! Hey! Babes! Hey! Gus in the hey. Come on, Faze, baby, let's go. Come on, big dude. Let's go, Bogo. Come on, Gus Bus, let's go, let's go. I got one, I got one! Come on now! Hey, we get pucks out in this area right here. We get them out of our zone with a chip. We can catch that line. Encouragement goes a long way, and, and, and helping someone beside you, you know, pick up their feet. And you know, the only way to turn things around is to stay positive and, and keep pushing, keep working hard. And if you don't stay positive in that moment, then uh, you'll never see that opportunity. Favor. Starting up Batherson right side and his wrist are shouldered away by Gustafson. Both me and, and Anton Forsberg were, were playing very good and then it was a great game. We came short just a little bit. Let's go wild. You know, I, I was very nervous before the game, more nervous than I'm for a normal game because everyone's looking at you and, and you feel like you're, you need to play just a little bit better just because you're in Stockholm, you're in Sweden. And, and after a game, it kind of a little relief that I managed to play that good. <laughs> so I had my, my mom, dad, my two siblings, my other side on my mom's side, my aunt there and my cousins. It's hard to get over there, so playing, like watching them play here is making it so much easier. Like people can actually make it. And it's really fun. I'm very nervous. I sit and hold my hands. It's going to go well. And just going out to, to see them after was, was very special to, to hug them all and, and talk, talk to them and, and yeah, um, just see them. Hello. Hola. Hey. 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 Is that supposed to be you? Uh, I need to ask her. <laughs> I think so. Now with a short turnaround, the Wild are back at it again, ready to wrap up the trip to Sweden with an early morning puck drop against the Toronto Maple Leafs. Freddie Gaudreau is back. After missing 10 games, he'll center a line with Johansson and Boldy. Hartman returns as well. He missed yesterday ill. He'll get back into the lineup today, so we expect him to play, and it looks like he's going to play the wing with Felino and Jules Eriksnek in the middle of that line. The Wild have lost four straight and eight of their last ten overall. Also 0-1-1 on the season series with the Leafs. Marner to the loose change. Spun it around for Matthews to come out left circle. Center wide open was Riley. 
and he scores. It didn't feel like one of those games that we deserved to be down 3 nothing. So, um, again, one of those things that, uh, you know, we had to will ourselves to come back there. And, you know, I thought it was one of the best, you know, 40 minutes, at least uh, you can say, or, or, or 50 minutes that we've played all, all season. So it was definitely one of those things where you're getting behind the eight ball early and everyone kept uh, their head up high and pushed forward. And, and we, we played a really good uh, wild hockey that day. I think that trip we started put a lot of pressure on ourselves to get our, our game going back the right direction and um, obviously being down two in that third period was not the spot we wanted to be but uh, battled back and get that point and get it to overtime was huge for us. Point Brodeen, hands are long favor, walking in right side, got past the check, threw one in front, they score! A no quit on the bench and the positivity that we had there, it, it was good that third period, no one was down and obviously would have liked to win it in overtime to get the two points, but to be able to come back against a team like that and come back from two goals was, was something that obviously we could have built off of. William Nylander wins it for the Maple Leafs, beating Flurry on a power move in front. And Toronto escapes the comeback effort by the Wild. They win it 4-3. It was maybe maybe once in a lifetime. Uh, once a year they bring a team over and maybe this, this was the only chance I had. We showed Stockholm for all the guys in the team and it felt like we got better. I think there was a really good like team building for us too. You know, you get together as a group, a lot of dinners and just hang out. So that was, um, I think we got tighter as a group for sure. Going back home, being able to play in front of persons that maybe really can, can't or are able to make it over here. So that's that's one thing that's going to be be with me for, for the rest of my, of my life and for, for us as a team, I think. It's just a great, uh, great way to get even closer and um, being um, able to to see and discover new countries and um, new cities is, is, a, is a great way, I think, to, to become even closer as a team.